congratulations on your new tour. I got the chance to watch uh, some of your Amazon special last night um, and really enjoyed it. Um, for people who don't maybe know as much about you, um, I think you're really uh, known for popularizing poetry to a sort of a mass audience. Talk about that that reputation and, and what it means to you to, to be that person. These are things I don't think about because I feel like if I start thinking about what that means, I'm going to become petrified and never leave my bed. Um, I try to just focus on where I am right now. And um, it's like the wildest journey ever. Um, I started off in high school performing mostly pieces about women's rights, um, writing a lot about my parents, my experience, um, us as immigrants, um, as a group of people who had survived persecution and genocide. Um, sexual assault and abuse even when I would perform them in my city growing up you know people were like highly uncomfortable oh some of them loved it and other other people were like dudes were like oh she's so aggressive why can't she just write love poems and it's like for a minute I was like why can't I just write love poems let me try that but then I was like there's so many love poems. And if I'm not writing about this, then who's going to do it? And so I continued to write about assault. I continued to focus on the issues that re were really speaking to me. Um, and then, you know, one thing led to another. I self-published. That self-published book went on to sell like millions of copies. And they were like, write another book. And I was like, how? And then I somehow managed to do that. And now here we are. I think I finally can say that I feel now I'm in like a more secure and confident place um, versus when I was writing that second book because I was in my early 20s and there's just so much going on at that time you have so many self-doubts and on top of that you're trying to constantly figure out how you're gonna create another New York Times bestseller. <laughs> well talk about a little bit of the, the evolution because I mean I do think that that's interesting because you're writing about things in poetry that maybe a lot of women, young women haven't heard about in poetry. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why it's resonating with That's people. definitely why, yeah. Um, but so, but that's interesting. I mean, what, what, and obviously you come from, you know, originally from India and a different sort of culture. What was the pushback you were feeling at home and then also in Canada for what you were doing? Um, I, well, I feel really lucky because I was involved with this organization and we were all young organizers who were putting on events about the genocide that the Sikh community had faced back home. And we were often empowering each other to talk about women's rights and these type of issues. And these were the things that we talked about, me and my friends talked about all the time. So, um, I never thought that it was going to be as big as it was, but I think you're right in that. I didn't, I never grew up reading a book about by somebody who looked like me, first of all. I never grew up reading a book about poetry that was like, you know, easy to understand and easy to feel in my body. Like mostly when I read poetry growing up, it was I'm like trying to, it reminds me of English class with all my colored gel pens and I'm trying to use like literary devices to find the meaning, but I was never interested in writing that. I was really interested in writing. I was really interested in taking giant, big experiences and feelings and kind of me figuring out how I'm gonna take these puzzle pieces and create a sort of picture that makes like people's stomach, makes my stomach turn. And that's how I know when a poem is done. When I can read it to myself and my stomach flips in my body, I'm like, okay, done, on to the next one. Um, and there's like two forms of poetry that I write. I call it like performance poetry and that's poetry that comes to life on stage. And these are the pieces that are five minutes long. Um, maybe a lot of people don't even know that I do this. Um, because I share more of my shorter pieces online, but you see them in the Amazon special and you see me perform them 
on tour. And then the other thing I write is like paper poetry. And I love that it is purposefully short and concise. Um, and I say that paper poetry is what comes alive on paper because of the words that I use, the diction, the spacing, like everything is like very, very particular in a way that I feel like it makes certain words and certain ideas pop. And um, because I think at the time that wasn't, poetry wasn't as big as it is today, a lot of people related to it. Mm -hmm. And you were able to use the medium of Instagram and, you know, kind of current Mm -hmm. social media to really amplify your voice. Um, yeah, I was able to develop a readership because I did, I could not use the traditional forms to develop a readership because traditional forms didn't want me. They didn't think that poetry was something that would make money. They didn't think that I was 21. They like laughed They're like, what is this young person? Get out of here. Um, and so I used Instagram to find a readership of people who valued the same things as I valued. And then I sort of surpassed the gatekeeper by doing the self-publishing, proved that it worked. And that's when the publishers and everybody came around to it. Mm. But it's interesting. You talk a little bit about your special that you, you also have a little bit of a love hate thing with Instagram because of some of the comments and things like that. And then also, you know, I've read that, that, you know, they censored you in some ways. How, what, how do you feel about the platform now? Um, I feel no ways toward it. I mean, I'm really, I always try to think like, I, I never ever want to especially a social media platform tie myself to something like that like I always have said that like I need to live in a world where because social media became such a big part of my work um, and I've seen how it's sort of like swallowed people around me growing up um, and I see how it affects young people today and I always try to remind myself and the people around me like we need to be having such a healthy relationship with ourselves in the real world around us that if Instagram or social media disappears tomorrow, we're okay. Um, and if that gives us anxiety, then we have work to do. So I love that Instagram has given me a place to build this community of people who are so respectful and want to connect about heavy topics. And I really love that I, I can use that to actually then inspire real life connections, invite them to the shows meet in real life um because i think that's truly where the magic happens mm -hmm. um uh recently uh, one of your books was banned in texas uh by a local school board what what's your what was your reaction to hearing about that um I, i'm not i have to check but i'm not i think there was there's an attempt to ban in a couple of places and across some states it's confusing because I'm like, this is, I would see it like more as like a, it's in fact, it's educating about sexual assault and consent and what it is like as a young woman to experience those things. And to hear that some parents find it so offensive that they think it's like, so sexually explicit their teenage kids shouldn't be reading it i'm like i don't even know if they read it themselves you know it seems like what they did was like that's funny because this was a comment on one of the threads because a bunch of parents were fighting on facebook about it and one of the parents who actually is supporting the book and was like i don't think any of you have read it it seems like they've just like opened it up saw one illustration and you know um but i think that What's sad is that the vic, the, like who's suffering the most when we ban books is young readers. And it's young readers that are finding comfort and valuable information in our books. And the books that are being banned are mostly about marginalized communities. Um, hundreds of books across America are being banned about racism, women's issues, LGBTQ themes. And that's really scary.